Why does it necessarily have to do that? One is just, we start with one Hashem and then we break it off. So you know, like one group, that everyone is still connected. You know, like why can't we just why aren't all the Nishambas blocked and separate and like like people? I mean, like you know. Right. Oh, but there, there's. Isn't there intrinsically a connection between two things that came from the same place? They're the same, you can, like, you, like you meet a lansman on the street. There's some kind of, there's automatically a connection with the fact that we came from the same, like your brother. <clears throat> Why does it have to be the brothers are connected? I'm not, I'm not explaining. I'm, not, I'm only making your kasha bigger, but I'm just saying, like, why is it? I don't know, but it, it certainly is, right? But, why is it a feeling? Well, it's it's more than a feeling. It's a the um, horror. I mean, under mo in normal circumstances, it would be a, an exception in history if, if brothers were not connected. Meaning, if there's that sub level of connection. Yaakov and Asa, you know. The Shakeh, who was, uh, I was looking for the uh, source just before we, before we begin, or I should say before we end. <laughs> the, the, uh, I've been looking for the source for this idea that is like, given as a, such a double of uh, that there's one Neshama and then it breaks into many, many Neshamas. So the, the Rabak here brings it very clearly, that's the source. But I was looking for an earlier source. So um, I was looking online, so a, a number of, uh, of the Mekubolim online refer to the concept, but they don't bring a source. Hmm. So as they say, Kiyodua, you know. Um, so I'm doing better than that because they don't even bring the Tover Dvara, so um, like, <laughs> you are sitting with a great Mekubol here. <laughs> but I, I, uh, I, I lied, so uh, uh, I don't want to mention names, I don't want to be, but uh, like a couple of them. I'm talking very pretty famous people. So they have like uh, let's go vote. You know, you can actually send them an email. So I said, okay, so I'll send them an email. So I sent out three emails um, to big Mikubalim, um as to what's the source for this, and um, one of them said Enli uh, Musag. <laughs> the other one said Eli Lozocher. And they actually answered. It was, it was very interesting. <laughs> Lozocher, and the third one said Tober <laughs> So. Um, so thus, thus it is. Like, you know, we are here. We are here at the source. Where's the like, foundation? Right, right. So um, I'm, I'm very curious about it. I just want before we close the book, I want to write it by a margin over here. What the, what the source is? So I, uh, I put in a call to. Um, I put in a call to Rev Ginsburg, uh, who's uh, you know, in Krakowat. He's probably like the biggest book couple of the door. So uh, I just to try to find out. But so far. I don't know. I do. I do want to. Um, spending a lot of time on this Sheiris Nachalosa, and Dalad, but so did the Tamar Dvara. He spent much more time on this than he did on all the other mitos. So I just want to finish it off together. I don't think tomorrow um, the Avodas Hayom is such that I don't think uh, we'll be able to have a shear tomorrow. So it's, uh, it's just something to go to your Kipper with. Um, so the Maskan is Adamim Chaveray. So too is it. A man with his fellow man. Again, you know, if we're learning that Hakadosh Baruch Hu created Kla Yisrael, and it's not just this cre creation that now becomes separate of himself, but in fact it's an extension of himself, the nerve endings of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Um, Tzalem Alekim, the neshama. We know the neshama is that way, right? Neshama shenasata be, shenafachta be, atanafachta shenasata be. It's a chelik of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, godliness, however you want to understand it, within us. So there's a connection there. So therefore, it follows that um, it's not just this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. It is that, but there's an omic to that also. The omic is that uh, it's you, you don't you don't sort of like um, you know hit your hand and say that's going to hurt me more than it hurts you. That is me. It's not a. It's different. It's different. It's, it's not even a you and a me. So Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Um, if needing to give an onesh to to um, to somebody in Klai Yisrael, it actually kaviachal, um, as much as we can understand, um, creates pain. When I was a bacher here in yeshiva, it was always so. Uh, um, it was 
stuck in my mind. There was a doctor, Jacobson, who uh, that the Yeshiva Bachim used to go to. I think it was a Gibbat Shaul. Uh, I'm talking about in the early 70s. So uh, at that time, he was an old man. If he'd be alive today, he'd be in the hundreds somewhere. At that time, he was an old man, but he was a, a doctor, so uh, uh, I think he was Dutch, I think. Uh, but uh, I remember him telling a story that, you know, he, when he was, um, I don't, I don't remember the circumstances, but I just remember he was alone someplace and and uh, in some war somewhere, and, uh, and and he needed an operation desperately. He was a doctor, but he needed an operation desperately. It was an appendix operation, and uh, there was no way to get it, so he did an operation on himself. Um, like they say, you should do an operation on your father or on your son. Can you imagine such a thing? Like, uh, have good, good mirrors. What? Good mirrors. Did that operation? He knew what had to be done, and he did it. You know. So. <coughs> probably without anesthetic also. Huh? Probably without anesthetic. Horror. He didn't put himself to sleep. Right? <laughs> 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 Can't do a general on this, you know. It's a, it's a, it's a oh, yeah, without yeah. anything. I mean, you know, what did he have already? Did someone do a Milan? Or did someone else? Horror did it himself, right? So, uh, yeah. So, um, and his Milan already is. But, you know, it sounds easier than an appendix. You don't think so? <laughs> um, I, 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 look, you're talking to the wrong guy. I mean, to me, like, you know, even the thought of, you know, like, uh, getting a filling, like, freaks me out. You know, like, I, I gotta, <laughs> but but I, I just, it's just, like, such an interesting thing. But when you start thinking about, it's not like, you know, man talking to appendix. <laughs> I am now going to remove you. <laughs> Uh, one, one cannot distance himself from his appendix until you actually take it out. So, but but you got to do what you got to do. Uh, a question of life or death, you have to do what you have to do. So when you when you uh, when you think about a, a, a concept of Hakadosh Baruch Hu giving an onesh to Klai Yisrael and feeling the onesh, we're talking about a, a, a very um, it's a very strong idea. It's not like you know I hate to do this, but it's it's much more. I'm, I'm actually. I'm actually hurting. I'm actually hurting. But my asset. So if now you take the concepts of the Tamar Dvar, which is a very, very strong concept, and you say, well, that's the same connection between Jews. Let's talk about Jews because it's easier. The same connection as we all came from the same from the same neshama. Notwithstanding Rabbi Chaim's question. Okay, therefore, but the fact of the matter is that apparently. Um, it, it is. It remains connected. It's not just like breaks apart into like stars, stardust. You know, it it, it actually remains connected to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, and that's all part of the Achdus Hashem, as we learned. That's all part of the, of, of saying the Achdus Hashem. That's what the Bar Ditchever taught us. That's all part of Hashem Echad. So, so philosophically, we've taken um, we've taken a shift from being part of Hashem to being part of each other, and explain. A couple of days ago, that that's why, um, if one gets involved with the tzibur, so you there's a certain um, you, you get the whole tzibur to you. If you dive into the Ramchal says, if you dive in a minion, so it's a nest of a minion. Uh, it's exeris hakasa, but there's a nest that, that throughout a minion, when you'll take ten random Jews together, ten random Jews together, you will have every important mida necessary to, to approach Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Somewhere in that minion, somewhere in somebody's life, he was most enough for kashras. Somewhere in somebody's <coughs> life, he helped somebody in a way that really hurt him. Now, now there's, a, there's, there's, that's the one ness is that somewhere amongst ten Jews, it's like, um, you know, there's statistical games that you could play this way. That you know, if there's a certain amount of people in the room, there will always be two people with the same birthday. So, so some way, somewhere in, in, in that room, Akharish Baruch Hu, was Masavev in that minion that you've got every mida together, if we could pull pool them together and put them in one basket, we've got every mida needed to approach HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And it doesn't necessarily even get better or more midas with 11 people or 1100 people because you have it all with the 10. Now you can increase the, you can make the basket even stronger, up two, three people, but, but it's, the, all midas are there because we're not clothes, so it's not like everybody's got the same. We're all most of efforts to learn Torah. Somewhere in there, and I'm not talking about somebody necessarily, necessarily who uh, Moser Nefesh, or Kolel, I don't, I don't even know that, but for one minute, 
And for one minute, a, most, a person was most nervous to learn Torah. A person who was most nervous to go to a meeting. That goes into the pool there, you know. And, and when you push, push with the crowd, so the, 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 all of a sudden the connection between us becomes very strong. That's what that's becomes very important. And, 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 and you know, you don't want to daven by yourself anymore. Why, why, why is it min? Why does it min? Why does it tim have to be min? Kach gozer Hashem. And what is the 600,000? I mean, don't there? forget, the, 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 the Sharish Neshama always comes from a, from a man, like the, the Chava came from Adam. What does the 600,000 do? 600, okay, so I, I'm, I'm not sure how the geometry works right. and, and it's out of the scope, but apparently the Rosh Neshamas are 600,000. But okay, now, now let's take it, that's, that's yesterday's turn. Let's, let's take it a step further. Um, that's what it means in terms of, of joining the cloud. But here he says something. So really, I'm, I'm actually no Kabbalah here. Just played Busser, but I'm having a, a difficult time wrapping my brain around this. Kol kach adamim chaverai. I'm sorry. Let's go a little bit further. V'lokach. That's where I want to start. V'lokach. Because of everything that we learned, roi la adam liyos chafetz betuvasei shel chaverai. Ve'enoi toiva. Sounds easy. <laughs> it's, when you start thinking about this, it's, it's like really interesting. Like, like how to be mamish happy that somebody else has hatzlach. I'm happy when I have a tzlach. <laughs> you know, happy if I make a lot of money or achieve a great achievement, gashvias or ruchnias, whatever it might be. But, you know, I mean, we, we're polite, but it, it seems like, I was thinking about it, that are, are we genuinely happy when somebody else is successful? It's easier with your son because and I'm successful. Right? Fell. Right? Fell. Well, it's not just fell. Like you know, if he's if he got the genius of the year award, so probably got it for me, right? <laughs> <laughs> worst comes to worst, I chose well in a wife. <laughs> but okay, but it's it's easier, you know, to to do that. Now he's not saying here, um, be altruistic, be jealous. He's saying hare who, share who, who, babish. You're not talking. No, you're talking about a random person. You see a random person who's who's successful in something that you would like to be successful in. Um, otherwise, we don't care. Are we genuinely happy with that person's success? I, I, um, I you know, when you uh, maybe Arab Yom Kippur, I'm, uh, like I get a little bit paranoid about you know, but like, it, it be like, you know, when we talk about to Fargin, which I really don't know. Uh, if if and what the English translation of is in Hebrew, there's a translation of Lefargain. <laughs> so Lefargain, so they can't come up with anything either. I looked up Lefargain in the dictionary. It took them about three lines to say oh, what word means. You know, you don't do this, you don't that, you don't hold a grudge. You don't, uh, but um, it, what's the word? Grudge. Not to be grudge. You already got a few. Uh, yeah. I, I don't even know what begrudge means, to be honest with you. I mean, I know I use the word. But, uh, I, I don't know what like begrudge. Mean. Uh, in Yiddish, there's an expression of farges, farkuk, and fargin, which comes from the German varges, <laughs> varkuk, and vargin. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for, for it's interesting, those fours, far, for, you know, forget, you know, forgive, and fargin. So we know what forget means. We know what forgive means. But forgin is a is a little bit more difficult. But let's so let's let's just understand. I think we're talking about something even more than that. But let's just even start with that. Um, you know, to forgin and nachayin is it means that I'm okay with the fact that you. Um, okay, it's easy for us. We're, we, we live here in Eretz Yisrael, and we're pretty, uh, you know, we already came here, and we are already made some kind of commitment to becoming tzaddikim, I hope. But, uh, you know, it's easy for us if somebody else has a nicer car, who cares, you know, if somebody else has a nicer house. 
I mean, who really cares? You know, maybe you'd say, oh, it'd be nice to have a nice house, but it's not, it's not, this is not our uh, life over here. But what's difficult is like when somebody else finishes Shas, you know, or when somebody else seems to have like the, the energy to really help people. Uh, so that you have to also forget, <laughs> like, uh, you know, somebody has a, a, a spiritual accomplishment, Kava maybe, that's like a hard, like, so I, I think, I just, just want to point this out, I think there's a, um, I don't understand it really, I'm having a hard time understanding it, but I think there seems to be a human tendency to, um, when somebody else is matzliach, to knock it down. Eh, that's just because his father-in-law is this and his mother-in-law is that. <laughs> but if you think that it's part uh, of, if you think it's part of you, then that's the way to look at it. Well, you know, that's what he's saying. That's the point. This is the answer. But uh, but before we get the answer, I don't. I don't my question. My question is something. I, just, I don't know why it's so difficult for people to, uh, to to, uh, like, like why is it so difficult? Why do we have this human need? Uh, I'm just asking. I don't know the answer, but I'm just. Why do we have this like human need to slug up any success somebody else has? Like, why? Why is? And to just look at it some uh, in, a, in a, diff, a different light. Why? Why did Hashem put that person in mm -hmm. front of us to show that to okay, us? Even better. Even better. <laughs> I remember once asking in yeshiva, I was not asking, saying, I, was, I don't know why, I, I don't remember the context, but I remember once saying to my rabbi, like, you know, uh, he, was talking, he was talking about ask so-and-so, uh, you know, he'll know the answer, I don't understand it, so he told me, ask so-and-so. So, so, like, I, I had this uh, regesh of, uh, like, you know, what do you ask so-and-so, like, why should he know this Tyson so that I should understand the Tyson? Like, I had this kind of, I mean, I was 15 years old. So I said, like, like uh, I just said, like, I'm, I'm envious or I'm jealous of him that, you know, like, he has the ability to understand the Tysos that I don't. So, like, I, like so he said, uh, why, he took your Chachma? <laughs> it's always, <laughs> so, like, took yours, like, it's, he, like, he took yours and he stole it. I mean, he, he has his Chachma, you have your Chachma, what's the, okay, so I wish I could look at the world that way. I try to, I'm not, I don't think I'm, uh, I'm uh, worse than anybody else in this regard. I'm just, I'm just saying that there's a, uh, it's just a uh, but what is the Matthias of Kina? Like, Bach, Patla, do somebody else should be Matsliya? Well, we compare ourselves to someone else, and, and, and they, they did it and we didn't, so it's like, it feel like it was a TV on ourselves. So the only way to do it, okay, so the only way to do it is to, to slug the other person, to bring the other person down. Yeah. He didn't really do it. I, I don't know, I, I think it's true, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, I always, I always tell the story when I was in a, uh, I was a rope of a show in America, so there was a, uh, there was, there was a spot, par parking spot reserved for, for a rabbi, you know, parking spot, you know, which was close. It was hard to get a parking spot. So it was, it was a parking spot. So one time I came and uh, <coughs> somebody was parked in my, uh, in my spot. Not one time, hundreds of times. <laughs> somebody was parked in my spot, but this time it was like a, a, like a really cool looking Ferrari. You know, it was parked in my spot. So it was like a funny you know, thing to say that parked in my spot, you know, reserved for rabbi. For rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyways, I just had parked somewhere else, obviously. And I, and I, uh, I just went, I was just like a fleeting thought. I came into Shul, and there was actually a discussion about how they're paying the rabbi too much. <laughs> I, uh, like, I think that, like, you know, if he's able to buy a Ferrari like that, like, you know, what are we paying? So, like, that's how we, you know, <laughs> so, you know, so, I mean, obviously, it's silly. I didn't, you know, I didn't, you know, to drive a Ferrari, but, but, uh, and I just, I just I was thinking to myself, like, like, you know, why aren't you happy that I would have uh, enough money to have a, a Ferrari? Like, what, what's, what's the, what, what's this, what's this, what's this, uh, Soros Ayan that it somehow bothers you? Did I have you drive a Ferrari? <laughs> like why? Why? Why would it bother you? Just a just a, a thought. Why would it bother anybody that anybody has something? So yeah. you're right. It's, it's simple kina, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think Chazal are more sophisticated than kina a little bit because they talk call it al chet she chatasi lefanecha but Isn't that a derivative? That's my my point. Isn't that all, on all of these things tzarisayin and all these things? Oh, the kina category. Yeah, that was derivative. What does it have to do with while we're at it? Um, kina is belief. Sora is Ba'ayim. What does the eyes have to do with it? What do the eyes have to do with it? Sa'ad hmm? is also limited. Yeah. You have a very limited vision to what's going on. That's Sa'ad of science. And, and you can only see your Da'adamus and that's it. You can't see the bigger picture. Now how does that, how, what are you explaining? I think that's, that's what leads to it. Meaning the Chazal are, are defining it in a very deep way. 
Open up your head. Right. Open up your heart. But why ayin? So it's ayin to pit tunnel you vision. Ayin wa lechomet. First, you What your eye sees, you want. But if it doesn't whatever your eyes see. It's not that the eyes have a regish. So if the eyes are an input to the lay, it, it, these are all inputs to kina. Okay. Hmm? Uh, 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 yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You really sound like you want to say something. <laughs> As I read this medrash, I, I, I mentioned this medrash before, it, it, um, it jars me. The Medrash in Yalka Chimoni in Parshas by Yelech speaks about the last day of uh, Moshe Rabbeinu's life and handing over the, not just the leadership to uh, Yoshua, but the, the ability to prophesize. There's another piece of it. In other words, Moshe Rabbeinu did not die a prophet. <coughs> he had to lose his prophecy and give it to Yoshua for some reason. Couldn't be two prophets? No. There's one person who's that God of Ador, and, and Yoshua had to, perf Moshe Rabbeinu had to perforce be demoted in order for to Yoshua to go up. Now, <coughs> how would that feel? So, you know, Moshe Rabbeinu, <laughs> Moshe Rabbeinu, what are we talking about? Malach at this point, the last day of his life. So, as the Medrash says that um, the whole story, but the part that I'm working at, that's, um, Hashem said to Moshe, I say lo, on the last day, I say lo, do to Yoshua, kishem shal yo say lecha. Um, you need to treat him, Yoshua, the way he usually treats you, meaning now he's the rabbi and you're the Talmud. Miad hishki Moshe v'holach lebeso shal Yoshua. So now what used to happen daily is Yoshua would come to Moshe's tent and say, okay, Moshe Rabbeinu, you know, let me walk you to the to the oil moed. And now, different Moshe Rabbeinu, you go to Yoshua's tent and you give him the kavod, and you bring him to to the um, to the tent. I I I, um, I heard Baruch Hashem uh, uh, like Baruch Hashem was also to see things from Gedola. It was like such an interesting uh, like uh, my pleasure to share. But I did, uh, somebody told me. That uh, he said, where do you learn? I said, I learned by Rav Scheinberg. I learned by Rav Scheinberg. So he said, I, I will tell you, this is an old person um, that told me this. He said, I'll tell you an interesting thing, Rav Scheinberg. So he said that when um, when the Rosh Hashiva of Chafetz Chaim, of David Leibowitz, that's all, was Nifter, he was Rosh Hashiva of Chafetz Chaim, so there was like a bit of a division in the Yeshiva there who should be the Rosh Hashiva. So the, Rav David Leibowitz had a son, Rav Hanach Leibowitz, who became the Rosh Hashiva. And had uh, Rav Scheinberg, who was maybe a little bit older and went to the mirror, it was a different, you know, a little bit of a different, I mean, not for me to compare between Rosh Hashivas, but I think a little bit different. Um, and many of the Talmudim wanted Rav Scheinberg to be thought it would be the natural thing for him to be the Rosh but he wasn't the son, and, you know, etc. So um, the Rosh Hashiva, Rav Scheinberg, Paskin, that he should be the Rosh Hashiva. Um, he said that's the correct thing, and uh, he actually at that time he wrote a, a, a little kuntras on on the uh, which I have on the sugya of whether Rosh Hashiva kite goes be Yerusha, whether there's such a thing as a Yerusha. That the, he divided up into a number of issues. There's the title, there's the finances, there was on the building, you know, like there's a lot of different parts to it. But anyways, he paskin kilu for himself, <coughs> and, and Reb Hedich was a tzaddik. He said, you know, like. You know, he's a post like what a Paskin, you know, like that's the, uh, so I mean, it must have been a, a somewhat of an uncomfortable, you know, I could have, they're still human beings, I mean, they're, they're, they're human beings. And this was a talking about, uh, I don't know, how many years ago, uh, 70 years ago, something like that? Huh? Yeah, I think we're talking about 24. 24, okay, so it was a, uh, Rebetta was a very hush of a person, about a uh, very hush of a person. You were, you, you were from the Chaim family, you know the vice yeah. Anyway, so somebody told me, uh, so you told me, uh, Rav Shapiro, so that's my uh, son-in-law, Moshe Becker's grandfather, who learned in Chavetz Zerava, Chassid Zerava. So he learned in, uh, in uh, Chavetz Chaim at, at that time. So when I first met him, so he tells me that uh, the, 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 the mark of the Rosh Hashiva was that he gave the Shir Kloli on Tuesday. 
So that was like that's that was the defining point. If you're the Rosh Hashiva, so you give the you give that particular shear. Otherwise, it's just the title. Like that's the. So he said that Reb uh, you know, uh, gave it to give this year, 24 years, 24 years old. And probably many of the Talmudim were older than him. And uh, and and Rav Scheinberg wanted to, you know, make, you know, reinforce the issue. So he came to this year, which only made Reb very nervous. <laughs> He's giving this the shear, and he was he was um, like say he was nervous, and he was but he was giving the shear. He was giving the shear clearly, and uh, so Rav Scheinberg in the middle. Um, Asked a question on the shear, so he said, or Scheinberg said, that what did the Rosh Hashiva mean <laughs> when when you said this and this mm-hmm. point? So um, Reb Henoch, um, somebody asked him like 30 years later, like when exactly you became the Rosh Hashiva. He said, when Rav Scheinberg said, when did the Rosh Hashiva, <laughs> like uh, you know, that's that's haste to fargin and nachayid, like you know, that's that's to fargin. In other words, not just okay, you be the Rosh Hashiva, I'm Bregas, you know, okay, I'll even sit here. Like he, he crowned him, um, the Rosh Hashiva, like, and all the tension, all the stress ended with, with the good heartedness of, you know, what did the Rosh Hashiva mean? And he said the whole shear changed. Like the whole, mm-hmm. like, okay, now the Rosh Hashiva. So it, the, the whole shear changed. So you have to deshvay change, everything changed. So here, I just, mm-hmm. so here the, the Medrash says, Asay loy kishem shayu oisei l'cha. Miad, miad, like like by the Akeda, Hishkim Moshe v'halach lebeso shel Yeshua. So Moshe went walking towards Yeshua's house. This Yare Yeshua v'amar Moshe Rebbe Yavo Yetzli. Yeshua chapta Shrek. What's going on here? Moshe Rabbeinu coming to my house. Yotzu. So he ran out of his own tent. Laloich halach laloich halach Moshe l'smoiloich shel Yeshua. So you know, like if you're walking with uh, with your Rebbe, so you have to walk. On the, uh, or is the Rebbe has to be on the right, right side, right. on the right. But here Moshe went, Halach Moshe l'smolo shel Yeshua. He put Yeshua on the right. So that was a clear mark uh, to to the whole Klai Yisrael that Yeshua is the Rebbe. I'm not the Rebbe. Just like picture this like um, situation. Nichnas Moed. They went into the Omoid together. Yeshua's uh, his first time. Nichnas ulo Moed. Yorad Amud Ha'anon. And the Anon, as it did, came down the Shechina, came down in the form of a cloud. The Hifsik Menehem, and it, the, the Shechina landed on Yoshua and did not, left, it left Moshe Rabbeinu out in the cold. So here's Moshe Rabbeinu standing there, Navi, like Humbi Yisrael from Moshe Od, uh, he's standing there, and Yoshua is getting the, the Shechina over here. But Shidistalik Abud Ha'anon, when the Amud Ha'anon went away, Amr Moshe Le Yoshua. So Moshe said to Yeshua, Ma'amar l'cha adibar. So what did he say, God? Ma'amar l'cha adibar. Amar l'cha adibar. Yeshua said to him, Kishahaya hadibar nigla alecha yodeya hayisi b'ahoy yodabar yibach. Did I used to ask you always, like, what did God say? <laughs> a pella, no? Yeah. So I, just, I don't think that the child, like Yeshua was, like, nasty. Or, like, he wasn't a nice guy. Um, I, I just tell him what God said, but there's a did that uh, that if Hashem gives you a nevuah, unless He says labor, mm-hmm. you're not allowed to say it over. Maybe He's just talking to me. So uh, if He wanted you to hear, He would have put, put the shechina. Uh, the honor would have come down on both of us. So the fact that it came down on me, not you. So, so Yeshua, now the Rebbe gives Musser to Moshe Rabbeinu for what are you, uh, you know, what are you getting involved in my uh, business here of talking with the shechina. Oysa Shah at that moment, Hischel Moshe at Sovach. Moshe began to scream. The Yomar, and he said, Mea Misois for like Kina Achas. You heard a story? Mea Misois for like Kina Achas. I'd rather die a hundred deaths than have this feeling of Kina right now. I'm not saying anything so complimentary to Moshe, am I? Like, uh, I'm saying that, that what we're talking about is so deeply human. To, to, um, to kind of be jealous. Uh, Moshe Rabbeinu wouldn't have been jealous. Hey, you know, a nice scarf. You know, that's that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the Hashras Hashchina on Kla Yisrael. So even somebody as great as Moshe Rabbeinu was having a difficult time. Um, he's I'd rather die than than have this. So even though. Oh, it's my cue, the cue. 
Huh? It was Makir. It was Makir the Kina. So the godless of this Adam called Moshe is that he had that he was Makir. That this is something that's 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 very very real. So you know, I, I have a new um, such a simple thing, which is like a new insight. It's to the parsha. There's a Abish parsha that, that Moshe Rabbeinu, um, Hashem tells him, "Alei Alhar Nevo, like go up on Malas Apiska, Rei Esaharetz, go up on the mountain, climb, look, look at look at Eretz Yisrael, um, and you'll look at Eretz Naftali and Eretz Zuvul Eretz. You know, it goes through the whole, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, this is like Babish, like uh, torture. This has yeah, to yeah. be. Uh, what? Why? Like okay, it may have been so. Like Kina Achas, could you imagine the the, uh, the the feeling of Moshe Rabbeinu? Like you know, okay, I hit a rock. These guys built an eagle. I mean, these guys. I had, I mean, am I really worse than them? That they're zochet to go to Eretz Yisrael, and I'm not zochet to go to Eretz Yisrael. I mean, I'm not saying any chiddush. We know Moshe Rabbeinu was upset, but but to 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 go and to have to to, to look. And, and if you look at the Chumash, it's like, so, look, this is the land of God, this is the land of Naphtali, this is the land of... And, and Chazal say that, that he saw from all the way to the north, the Golan, all the way to the, to the Negev. And he saw all the way to the Mediterranean, and he had a special, put a short, he had a special eye in. Chazal say that on, on Enoi Leikos, he was able to see, not only that, he was able to see the whole history unfold. So he saw, he saw at that moment, Benavua, he looked at Eretz Yisrael. You imagine the man standing on a mountain, a man standing on a mountain and, and seeing the, the, the Mohammeds and seeing the Binyan Beis Hamikdash and seeing the Harbin Beis Hamikdash and the return of the exiles of the time of Ezra and us, uh, you know, just to see that whole thing and to say, I'm not part of it. <laughs> I'm not part of this, this whole... Yes, 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 yeah, yes. What, what kind of... Like and and why why okay don't want to let me go to Israel let me go to Israel but Hashem tells him you 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 take, look so comes Rashi and Chazal and he says like why did he what did he what's to look what's to see so he said I mean who who's apparently uh, Moshe Rabbeinu want to give it like you give an eye in Hara you want to give an eye in Tova and. He, he conquered this, and he was able to stand on the mountain. This man who recognized <coughs> his own feeling of jealousy with the Shechina Hashem, Mea Misa is like, he was able to stand on this mountain and forgive Naphtali and God and Asher and Yehuda and Ruvain and Shimon and Levi. He was able to forgive the Beis HaMikdash. He was able to forgive you and the Beis HaMikdash. It's okay. Like, I, I, it's okay. Can you imagine, like, working so hard, let's say, to, to, to get to Israel, you want to build a beautiful building, and then you have to die, and I want to walk in with David Amelach. So it's, 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 it's to forgive is, is, is so divine, you know, it's so godly to be able to, to, to do such a thing. But that's the libud of Moshe Rabbeinu. So it's not just he stood there and he saw and he looked. He, he stood there and nasa lahem ayin toiva. Kedei litein lahem ayin toiva. So um, unlike what you were saying, it's not just intake. Apparently from the eyes there's some output. And, and, and the output, like, you know, like laser treatment. So, so the output of Moshe Rabbeinu was that he was able to put an ayin tova on every moment, of, on every one of us. On every moment in history, of every corner of Eretz Yisrael, has that ayin tova. If something would have been, you know, nistam with a lead jacket, you know, not been able to say, so the oranges won't grow there. So, like, if if you if, if you look at the miracles, if you look at the miracles of, of of even the agricultural miracles that have taken place even in the last fifty years, just because Moshe Rabbeinu looked there, it's, it's pashut that Moshe Rabbeinu looked there, and, and and that's what he saw. This this koach was was I think according to the Talmud Dvorah, was Moshe Rabbeinu understanding that this is not you, this is me. And in, in a certain way, it was selfish, if you will, uh, but not self-centered, but it was him. In other words, the, the, the ultimate realization of, of this great man, Moshe Rabbeinu, you know, Moshe Rabbeinu, was that he was able to feel Bachpatli if it's me, Bachpatli if it's you, as long as like as long as we're as long as we're here, you know. But and for him, we wouldn't be here. Yeah. So, but it, it's it's okay. It's it's a nachas, it's a nachas. So um, that's so. If you look at the words, really have to enjoy toivas and shulchaverai. 
Ve'enoi toiva al toiva schaveroi. I am toiva. With Moshe, I am toiva. It's a form of Kenyan, no? The I. Hmm? Kenyan. It's a form of Kenyan. It's a form of Kenyan by seeing something, which is why yes. the Havi do not look at certain things. As a koach. As a koach. Ukvodo ye chavi valov kishalo. I'm mamish just as happy. Well, this is a very, um, this is a big madrega, I think, but it's something that I'm just as happy that you're getting covered, that, I, that, that I'm getting, like at least one of us is getting covered. It's like a good thing. Sharei hu, hu, mamish. So here we have the Omex as the Ramak, the big Makubal, that this is the Pshat and Vahavta Laracha Kamocha. This is this is this is where Rabbi Kiva said Zaklal Gadol Batayra, that there's the Kamocha Varoi, she yirtsa bekashrus chaveroi. Kashrus chaveroi means I want my friend to have a good reputation. See, this is a new a new uh, um, gentleman, this is a whole new reason not to talk Lush and Hara. Because does anybody talk Lush and Hara about themselves? You know, lots of. It, but it's, it's, you know, does anybody really, um, except for maybe, you know, some kind of a, a agenda-driven, self-deprecating, you know, does anybody Maybe. really want to ruin their own <laughs> reputation? Well, they have a shake it. So, like, the, the, whole, the whole new reason not to talk Lush and Hara, not because the Chavetz Haim says, or not because I'm going to lose all my mitzvahs, or not because even it's an Avera, but like who talks about the, you know, who Roishi Yurtsa Bikashrus Khaver Loya Daber Bagnuse Klau. How would you come to talk about would, you, would anybody talk about Shahar about their son? Get defensive. You know, I I, uh, I, I was having somebody yesterday, if you if you don't mind me, uh, and, uh, I, I indulge you. Indulge me to, to uh, I was thinking of yesterday like uh, you know, my old Kashwar Nefesh, like I have like this uh, this uh, syndrome, a uh, psychological problem that if somebody's like throughout all the years in school and everything, if like I'm a pretty idle guy, I'm not a like I'm not an aggressive person that much, but uh, you know, like if, if somebody who got uh, abused in any way, uh, uh, fight physically, uh, in any way, uh, any, any of my children like in school and all that, so go beat the heck out of them. <laughs> Like I don't know, like I see rat. I mean, I physically beat him up, but I like I do whatever I have to do to to to, to demote that pot, the guy to hurt that guy. It's a it's a bit of a chassard. I mean, like you know, sometimes like you got to be stand up, and maybe you know, it's not necessarily always the right thing to do, whether right or wrong. I did it. Like that, that was my uh, that was my uh, I just did it. Like uh, I ask my kids, like embarrass them. You know what I mean? I just <laughs> I, I go court of the principal in the in the, in the, in the hall, like you know, you know, what type of principal hit my kid across. The, Actually, punctured his uh, eardrum because oh, yeah, yeah. uh, he was peeling an orange in class. You know, like, like a, but I, I didn't. I, I got out of the car. I drove to Shul Kavanetsky. I, I, uh, I, I complained. I protested. Like, uh, and, um, and then left it alone. Um, P.S. That principal's in jail now for child abuse. Twenty years later, mm -hmm. and I don't forget him nothing. <laughs> but but my, my point is that there's a certain um, regesh when it's yours, um, almost an exaggerated regish, maybe a bad thing even, you know, like a mugzam. But, um, mugzam, but it's a sign that you're really connected. Uh, and that's something that you feel, and that's something that the kid feels, you're really connected, overprotective maybe, but really connected. So like, how connected are we that way to somebody, so who's, to, to somebody who's not you or not your child? So that's what he's saying, it's a whole different level uh, you, we get defensive when it comes to our children. Hey, you know, we get defensive. Even if they're wrong, we get defensive. You know, automatically you find yourself being defensive. So, like, maybe we've got to be careful with that. But that's a simon, at least, that who who mamish. That, yeah. that, that's a real connection. No? Why wasn't uh, Roshanberg's response about the Tosfos? It's your chachma. Like, why was it, you know, I mean, the implication was. I, I think that's what he meant. I, I really do it's think it's what he meant. I don't think so. I think what he meant is that here's a neshama, let's say, if we put it in our terms. It broke up into a number of different pieces. You have this piece, you have that piece. You know, so you can use his chachma. I think that's exactly what he meant, actually. That's exactly the way I took it. You can use his chachma and be happy with it and be jealous about it. But you're right, maybe this is even deeper than what he was saying. Because it really is easier to, I think, to, to be happy for someone if you realize that really what theirs, what's theirs is not yours. Meaning, that's their, you know, kafki or avodor or schar or whatever it is. Because that's them, and you know he didn't take mine. Right. He didn't take mine. Right. So that's that's one. So that's one madrega of not being jealous. But yeah, the, maybe there's a higher madrega. 
Right. I'll give you an example. Like let's say, you, like I said before, you're dominating a minion. So you're so mechan the schusim of every single person in the minion. So don't you want the other person to have more schusim? <laughs> you know, is there anybody here who like gave up their life, you know, for that's about out to an idol, you know? <laughs> like that's who you want to die. Like you know, the more schusim, the better. I'm not jealous. Like let's put this, put it in the pot. You don't know, you want to dive the Don't you want to dive into the tzaddik? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like you want him to be a tzaddik. Yeah. So you're not going to be jealous of a tzaddik because it's good for you. So this is this is his. Um, so it's both on the negative side and on the positive side to feel the pain, as if it's your pain, not as if it's your pain, to, to feel the, the, the toe, the joy, because it's your joy. So like here's, here's like a, if I may, like, like just, just a, a vote that I'm, thinking that uh, the good avoda for to, to Ariam Kippur is like to have nachas from somebody. It's, um, you know, it's such a, such a chesed, like so many, um, so many people um, are starving for somebody to have nachas from them. You know, like you know, your, your father's gone, your mother's gone, you're in a different country, whatever, you know, like you're older, like, like the big thing is not like, 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 how, how much will we do just to somebody to have a little bit of nachas from us? Like the kids, our, our kids, so much want us to have a little bit of nachas. I'm not talking about like by joy, I have nachas. Let's say you don't have nachas. But the, 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 the one you're having nachas from enjoys so much that you're having nachas from that person. It's a, it's a, it's a, a different, a different kneitch over here. So like it's such an unbelievable, how do you have nachas from somebody? You know, what if it's not your kid? Like, you know, we're Mubarak people with nachas. It's an avoda to have nachas and to display nachas because it makes the other person feel so good. How good do, do I feel if somebody has nachas for my success? How good do you feel if somebody has <coughs> nachas for your success? Like, yeah, yeah, how, how good does a chassan feel when everybody, when he comes into the room and everybody goes, oh, that's a wonderful geschmack, you know? How, how, how good does a person feel that, 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 that other people are being misameach in his simcha? It's such a. It's it's not just such a chesed, but this is what he's saying. Who who, babish. It's like the the connection is there. So it's just like if you think of some, you know, like this. It's something we can do. I think like this is what Moshe Rabbeinu went from Parshas Vayelach to Parshas Vezois Habracha. This is what he did at the last at the last day of his life. Vayelach to Vezois Habracha. He lo- he saw the Eretz of Naphtali, which should have been my land. And he had nachas from it. He went to the earth. It's of God, which should have been my land. And he had nachas from it, a land that he's never going to step in. He, he, he had nachas from That's ayin toiva. That was the ayin toiva. So it's something, something to um, maybe take somebody you don't have nachas from and, and have nachas. And, you know, besides everything else, um, our own personal avoid, you have nachas from somebody, you mamash turn the person around. You can mamash turn the person around, I'm telling you. I'm not talking about even kids, anybody. The, 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 the biggest cure of trick in history is to have nachas from somebody. In other words, if, you, if you're really mesameach v'simchasei, mitzara v'tzara, not just noisical, but hu hu mamish, uh, okay, I'm giving somebody nachas, I'll do more of it. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, such, a, um, it's such a clear thing, but let's concentrate selfishly. For, for us, um, to, to have the nachas, you come, you come before HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and he then has nachas from us. And if he has nachas from us, so then we could really get that gemara kasima toiva that we're all having. Uh, I have a decision to make. Um, uh, I guess we're going to start again after Sukkot um, to learn a number about every day. But we'll, 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 if we want to finish the Tamar Dvara or go back to Rav You don't know, have to answer. We just think. <laughs> Even though not Yom Kippur. <laughs>